Hey guys, we're on part three here of installing our mini split. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to hook up your lines, both the electrical and the line set to the outdoor unit. And then we're going to use the vacuum pump in our gauges and we're going to vacuum the lines and add the refrigerant. So that's what this video should entail. So we'll talk about the wiring on the outdoor unit. The uh, lines coming down with our 240 come from the disconnect box. They're going to run here where it says L1 and L2. And the communication cord that goes to the indoor unit, red is on one, black's on two, white is on three and that cord is grounded as well as the ground from the 240 volt circuit. I'm not using this wire connector here because I added one to the box here and it's going to put too much pressure on these wires. So we're going to put this plate on and that finishes up the electrical for the unit. Okay, we're at the point of the project where we need to connect our line set. I'm using this product called Nylog. Uh, basically what it does is it seals up these pipes and it stays fluid and doesn't get hard. And um, since I did not buy a micron gauge, I want to make sure that all my fittings are right. So here I am just putting on the Nylog. It goes on both sides of the flare, the outside and the inside, and the uh, brass fittings on the unit. The line set wasn't really too hard to get into place. Um, I just took my time and lined things up. I found the copper pipes to adjust very easily. Um, in fact, I didn't even need to use my copper tube bender. These nuts or caps should be torqued. However, um, I don't have a, a crow's foot torque wrench, so uh, I just snugged them up so that they were pretty tight. I will do a vacuum test and uh, we'll, we'll check if it drops at all. That would tell us that we have leaks. If you have leaks, it's going to be leaking from your connections. Okay guys, I got the vacuum pump. It's all hooked up. And uh, we're on the low port here. And here's the way this is set up. So the yellow hose on the manifold is tied into the vacuum and the low side is the blue that gauge is going to the uh, heat pump and air conditioner and the only thing that you'll need is an adapter these things are made 5 sixteenths of an inch rather than a quarter I'm not quite sure why they do that but you need an adapter so I have that adapter there and it's actually uh, a pioneer part so we have this thing vacuuming the air out. If there's any issues, you don't have to worry about losing refrigerant or anything because we didn't release the refrigerant into the system yet. And if we look here at the low side meter, we're trying to get this thing down to negative 30 inches of mercury. And I'm already there. Uh, actually, the, the manual says negative 20. So uh, we're in real good shape. We're gonna run this pump for 15 minutes. And uh, you just wanna be sure that if you get a pump, you add oil to it, because they come without oil. All right, guys, we're going on 15 minutes, which is plenty of time, because like I said, we're, we're even past negative 30, which is real good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna close off the low side. and we're going to turn off our vacuum pump. Now we're gonna let this thing sit about 15 minutes or so and we're gonna just keep our eye on this gauge and if that gauge goes down and it's losing vacuum that's telling us that there's a leak. 
All right, guys, it's been about 20 minutes or so, and this thing did not budge at all. I'm really liking the uh, gauge set, seems to work quite well. And if you do have a leak, you want to look where your connections are. So, down here, you have two connections, and in my case, up here inside this. Uh, cover I have two connections and you can check for leaks just by taking some bubbly water and a brush put it on there and uh, you should see bubbles uh, where it's leaking so that's how you test for it uh, now what we got to do is uh, charge the system with the refrigerant all right guys now we're gonna release the refrigerant want to make sure there's no leaks whatsoever otherwise you're going to need someone over here to charge your refrigerant so we'll take off that service cap and looks like it's a quarter inch should hear the uh, refrigerant be released. And you want to open this all the way up. There you go. And I'm going to use the Nylog again. Now, a little Freon will come out of here, so we're just going to try and remove this pretty quick. And all my, my gauges are in the off position. Okay, here's a look at the indoor unit. Right now it's uh, running on full blast. I don't know if uh, you'll be able to hear it, but uh, it definitely puts out some real nice cool air and it's super quiet. 71 degrees is what I have it set to, so it'll just maintain that temperature. Everything on the unit's controlled by uh, remote control. Here's the remote control. And I just kind of put it by my doorway on the way out so I can turn it on or off. And uh, you just control it right there. It'll hold whatever temperature you want. Um, air or heat. Here's a look at the outdoor unit running. It is super quiet, guys. I'm very happy with the way things look and how quiet everything is. So if this is a job that you're going to try and do on your own, you're going to need some tools. Um, 
I bought this manifold set that worked out real well for me and it came with uh, some five foot hoses and like I said it included the uh, uh, the adapter here so you don't necessarily need uh, to buy an adapter if you get this kit um, a pipe bender I didn't even use this thing but this thing does like 3 16 up to 3 8 inch pipe and uh, you can bend that hollow tube copper without kinking it a hole saw two and a half inches is what uh, I used I had this laying around it worked real well um, so you may need that to drill through your wall this is the vacuum pump I used uh, this one was uh, I got a little bit bigger one the cheapest one was a quarter horsepower this one's one-third and it's really quiet did a good job and uh, another tool is a flange maker okay or a flaring tool and uh, I was planning on cutting the lines and making the line shorter but uh, according to the company the lines need to be at least 10 foot so I would probably put my outdoor unit further away from the indoor unit if I were to redo the unit but those are you know the basic tools that you'll need and uh, you know cost wise I think I'm under $150 for all those but you can do the math so the total cost for my unit with all tools and everything somewhere around twelve thirteen hundred and uh, I think that's a real good price considering um, I called the local HVAC company and they were going to charge I believe the estimate was somewhere between 1900 and 2100 to install the electric and the entire unit. Um, as far as the unit goes, I would have to buy the unit that they work on. And they use more of the commercial, the more expensive units like the uh, Mitsubishi and Fujitsu and LG. Uh, so those units cost more money. And... Uh, you know, I was able to buy a, a cheaper unit and just put it in myself, uh, you know, really for about one-third of the cost. Um, these units, you know, as far as being cheap, they're supposed to last anywhere from 10 to 15 years, which seems like a long time. They run on the uh, 410A refrigerant, so, uh, you know, it's the newer refrigerant, which is really efficient. And uh, electricity-wise, these things run on inverter technology. So from what I understand, they turn the AC power into DC and it requires about, you know, half the amperage of a, a normal uh, heat pump or air conditioning unit. So they're real efficient to run. And another cool thing about these units is uh, you can tie more than one head or indoor unit onto an outdoor uh, compressor so you could have up to three of the uh, indoor units um, in different parts of your house uh, I'm really impressed with how cold it is my garage is uh, about 600 square foot um, I have nine foot ceilings in here I'm insulated very well including the uh, garage doors I've recently put up a uh, two inch foam board because uh, last winter was just so cold out here and um, you know I, this 18 18,000 BTU um, really is is more than enough in fact they recommended the 12,000 BTU but I kind of oversized it so uh, if you have any questions on these heat pumps or mini splits you can put it down there in the comments I'll be happy to answer and uh, as I said, I'll, I'll link to all the tools that I use for this project in case you're interested in doing it yourself. So thanks for watching, guys, and hopefully you enjoyed the video series. Stay tuned. Ch uh, check back because I am going to make a follow-up video on how this unit's treating me. Thanks, guys.